A castle, from Latin, castellum, is a type of fortified structure built in Europe and the Middle East during the Middle Ages by European nobility. Scholars debate the scope of the word castle, but usually consider it to be the private fortified residence of a lord or noble. This is distinct from a palace, which is not fortified, from a fortress, which was not always a residence for nobility, and from a fortified settlement, which was a public defense, though there are many similarities among these types of construction. Usage of the term has varied over time and has been applied to structures as diverse as hill forts and country houses. Over the approximately 900 years that castles were built, they took on a great many forms with many different features, although some, such as curtain walls and arrow slits, were commonplace. A European innovation, castles originated in the 9th and 10th centuries, after the fall of the Carolingian Empire resulted in its territory being divided among individual lords and princes. These nobles built castles to control the area immediately surrounding them and the castles were both offensive and defensive structures, they provided a base from which raids could be launched as well as protection from enemies. Although their military origins are often emphasized in castle studies, the structures also served as centers of administration and symbols of power. Urban castles were used to control the local populace and important travel routes, and rural castles were often situated near features that were integral to life in the community, such as mills, fertile land, or a water source. Many castles were originally built from earth and timber, but had their defenses replaced later by stone. Early castles often exploited natural defenses, lacking features such as towers and arrow slits and relying on a central keep. In the late 12th and early 13th centuries, a scientific approach to castle defense emerged. This led to the proliferation of towers, with an emphasis on flanking fire. Many new castles were polygonal or relied on concentric defense, several stages of defense within each other that could all function at the same time to maximize the castle's firepower. These changes in defense have been attributed to a mixture of castle technology from the Crusades, such as concentric fortification, and inspiration from earlier defenses, such as Roman forts. Not all the elements of castle architecture were military in nature, so that devices such as moats evolved from their original purpose of defense into symbols of power. Some grand castles had long winding approaches intended to impress and dominate their landscape. Although gunpowder was introduced to Europe in the 14th century, it did not significantly affect castle building until the 15th century, when artillery became powerful enough to break through stone walls. While castles continued to be built well into the 16th century, new techniques to deal with improved cannon fire made them uncomfortable and undesirable places to live. As a result, true castles went into decline and were replaced by artillery forts with no role in civil administration, and country houses that were indefensible. From the 18th century onwards, there was a renewed interest in castles with the construction of mock castles, part of a romantic revival of Gothic architecture, but they had no military purpose. Definition Etymology The word castle is derived from the Latin word castellum, which is a diminutive of the word castrum, meaning fortified place. The Old English castel, Old French castel or chastel, French chateau, Spanish castillo, Italian castello, and a number of words in other languages also derive from castellum. The word castle was introduced into English shortly before the Norman conquest to denote this type of building, which was then new to England. Defining characteristics In its simplest terms, the definition of a castle accepted amongst academics is a private fortified residence. This contrasts with earlier fortifications, such as Anglo-Saxon burghs and walled cities such as Constantinople and Antioch in the Middle East, castles were not communal defenses but were built and owned by the local feudal lords, either for themselves or for their monarch. Feudalism was the link between a lord and his vassal where, in return for military service and the expectation of loyalty, the lord would grant the vassal land. In the late 20th century, there was a trend to refine the definition of a castle by including the criterion of feudal ownership, thus tying castles to the medieval period, however, 
this does not necessarily reflect the terminology used in the medieval period. During the First Crusade, 1096 to 1099, the Frankish armies encountered walled settlements and forts that they indiscriminately referred to as castles, but which would not be considered as such under the modern definition. Castles served a range of purposes, the most important of which were military, administrative, and domestic. As well as defensive structures, castles were also offensive tools which could be used as a base of operations in enemy territory. Castles were established by Norman invaders of England for both defensive purposes and to pacify the country's inhabitants. As William the Conqueror advanced through England, he fortified key positions to secure the land he had taken. Between 1066 and 1087, he established 36 castles such as Warwick Castle, which he used to guard against rebellion in the English Midlands. Towards the end of the Middle Ages, castles tended to lose their military significance due to the advent of powerful cannons and permanent artillery fortifications, as a result, castles became more important as residences and statements of power. A castle could act as a stronghold and prison but was also a place where a knight or lord could entertain his peers. Over time the aesthetics of the design became more important, as the castle's appearance and size began to reflect the prestige and power of its occupant. Comfortable homes were often fashioned within their fortified walls. Although castles still provided protection from low levels of violence in later periods, eventually they were succeeded by country houses as high-status residences. Terminology Castle is sometimes used as a catch-all term for all kinds of fortifications and, as a result, has been misapplied in the technical sense. An example of this is Maiden Castle which, despite the name, is an Iron Age hill fort which had a very different origin and purpose. Although castle has not become a generic term for a manor house, like Chateau in French and Schloss in German, many manor houses contain castle in their name while having few if any of the architectural characteristics, usually as their owners liked to maintain a link to the past and felt the term castle was a masculine expression of their power. In scholarship the castle, as defined above, is generally accepted as a coherent concept, originating in Europe and later spreading to parts of the Middle East, where they were introduced by European crusaders. This coherent group shared a common origin, dealt with a particular mode of warfare, and exchanged influences. In different areas of the world, analogous structures shared features of fortification and other defining characteristics associated with the concept of a castle, though they originated in different periods and circumstances and experienced differing evolutions and influences. For example, Shiro in Japan, described as castles by historian Stephen Turnbull, underwent a completely different developmental history, were built in a completely different way and were designed to withstand attacks of a completely different nature. While European castles built from the late 12th and early 13th century onwards were generally stone, Shiro were predominantly timber buildings into the 16th century. By the 16th century, when Japanese and European cultures met, fortification in Europe had moved beyond castles and relied on innovations such as the Italian Trace Italian and Star Forts. Forts in India present a similar case, when they were encountered by the British in the 17th century, castles in Europe had generally fallen out of use militarily. Like Shiro, the Indian forts, Durga or Durg in Sanskrit, shared features with castles in Europe such as acting as a domicile for a lord as well as being fortifications. They too developed differently from the structures known as castles that had their origins in Europe. Common Features Mott A mott was an earthen mound with a flat top. It was often artificial, although sometimes it incorporated a pre-existing feature of the landscape. The excavation of earth to make the mound left a ditch around the mott, called a moat, which could be either wet or dry. Mott and moat derive from the same old French word, indicating that the features were originally associated and depended on each other for their construction. Although the mott is commonly associated with the bailey to form a mott and bailey castle, this was not always the case and there are instances where a mott existed on its own. Mott refers to the mound alone but it was often surmounted by a fortified structure, such as a keep, 
and the flat top would be surrounded by a palisade. It was common for the mot to be reached over a flying bridge, a bridge over the ditch from the counter scarp of the ditch to the edge of the top of the mound, as shown in the Bayou Tapestry's depiction of Chateau de Dinan. Sometimes a mot covered an older castle or hall, whose rooms became underground storage areas and prisons beneath a new keep. Bailey and Ansant. A bailey, also called a ward, was a fortified enclosure. It was a common feature of castles, and most had at least one. The keep on top of the mot was the domicile of the lord in charge of the castle and a bastion of last defense, while the bailey was the home of the rest of the lord's household and gave them protection. The barracks for the garrison, stables, workshops, and storage facilities were often found in the bailey. Water was supplied by a well or cistern. Over time the focus of high-status accommodation shifted from the keep to the bailey, this resulted in the creation of another bailey that separated the high-status buildings, such as the Lord's Chambers and the Chapel, from the everyday structures such as the workshops and barracks. From the late 12th century there was a trend for knights to move out of the small houses they had previously occupied within the bailey to live in fortified houses in the countryside. Although often associated with the mot and bailey type of castle, baileys could also be found as independent defensive structures. These simple fortifications were called ring works. The Ansant was the castle's main defensive enclosure, and the terms bailey and Ansant are linked. A castle could have several baileys but only one Ansant. Castles with no keep, which relied on their outer defenses for protection, are sometimes called Ansant castles. These were the earliest form of castles, before the keep was introduced in the 10th century. Keep A keep was a great tower and usually the most strongly defended point of a castle before the introduction of concentric defense. Keep was not a term used in the medieval period, the term was applied from the 16th century onwards, instead dungeon was used to refer to great towers, or turries in Latin. In Mott and Bailey castles, the keep was on top of the mod. Dungeon is a corrupted form of dungeon and means a dark, unwelcoming prison. Although often the strongest part of a castle and a last place of refuge if the outer defenses fell, the keep was not left empty in case of attack but was used as a residence by the lord who owned the castle, or his guests or representatives. At first this was usual only in England, when after the Norman conquest of 1066 the conquerors lived for a long time in a constant state of alert, elsewhere the lord's wife presided over a separate residence, domus, ala, or mansio in Latin, close to the keep, and the dungeon was a barracks and headquarters. Gradually, the two functions merged into the same building, and the highest residential stories had large windows, as a result for many structures, it is difficult to find an appropriate term. The massive internal spaces seen in many surviving dungeons can be misleading, they would have been divided into several rooms by light partitions, as in a modern office building. Even in some large castles the great hall was separated only by a partition from the lord's chamber, his bedroom, and to some extent his office. Curtain wall. Curtain walls were defensive walls enclosing a bailey. They had to be high enough to make scaling the walls with ladders difficult and thick enough to withstand bombardment from siege engines which, from the 15th century onwards, included gunpowder artillery. A typical wall could be 3 meters 10 feet thick and 12 meters 39 feet tall, although sizes varied greatly between castles. To protect them from undermining, curtain walls were sometimes given a stone skirt around their bases. Walkways along the tops of the curtain walls allowed defenders to rain missiles on enemies below, and battlements gave them further protection. Curtain walls were studded with towers to allow enfilading fire along the wall. Arrow slits in the walls did not become common in Europe until the 13th century, for fear that they might compromise the wall's strength. Gatehouse The entrance was often the weakest part in a circuit of defenses. To overcome this, the gatehouse was developed, allowing those inside the castle to control the flow of traffic. In earth and timber castles, the gateway was usually the first feature to be rebuilt in stone. The front of the gateway was a blind spot and to overcome this, projecting towers were added on each side of the gate in a style similar to that developed by the Romans.
the gatehouse contained a series of defenses to make a direct assault more difficult than battering down a simple gate. Typically, there were one or more portcullises, a wooden grill reinforced with metal to block a passage, and arrow slits to allow defenders to harry the enemy. The passage through the gatehouse was lengthened to increase the amount of time an assailant had to spend under fire in a confined space and unable to retaliate. It is a popular myth that so-called murder holes, openings in the ceiling of the gateway passage, were used to pour boiling oil or molten lead on attackers, the price of oil and lead and the distance of the gatehouse from fires meant that this was impractical. This method was, however, a common practice in the MENA region and the Mediterranean castles and fortifications where such resources were abundant. They were most likely used to drop objects on attackers, or to allow water to be poured on fires to extinguish them. Provision was made in the upper story of the gatehouse for accommodation so the gate was never left undefended, although this arrangement later evolved to become more comfortable at the expense of defense. During the 13th and 14th centuries the Barbican was developed. This consisted of a rampart, ditch, and possibly a tower, in front of the gatehouse which could be used to further protect the entrance. The purpose of a Barbican was not just to provide another line of defense but also to dictate the only approach to the gate. Moat A moat was a defensive ditch with steep sides, and could be either dry or filled with water. Its purpose was twofold, to stop devices such as siege towers from reaching the curtain wall and to prevent the walls from being undermined. Water moats were found in low-lying areas and were usually crossed by a drawbridge, although these were often replaced by stone bridges. Fortified islands could be added to the moat, adding another layer of defense. Water defenses, such as moats or natural lakes, had the benefit of dictating the enemy's approach to the castle. The site of the 13th century Caerphilly Castle in Wales covers over 30 acres, 12 ha, and the water defences, created by flooding the valley to the south of the castle, are some of the largest in Western Europe. Other features Battlements were most often found surmounting curtain walls and the tops of gatehouses, and comprised several elements, crenellations, hoardings, machicolations, and loopholes. Crenellation is the collective name for alternating crenels and merlins, gaps and solid blocks on top of a wall. Hoardings were wooden constructs that projected beyond the wall, allowing defenders to shoot at, or drop objects on, attackers at the base of the wall without having to lean perilously over the crenellations, thereby exposing themselves to retaliatory fire. Machicolations were stone projections on top of a wall with openings that allowed objects to be dropped on an enemy at the base of the wall in a similar fashion to hoardings. Arrow slits, also commonly called loopholes, were narrow vertical openings in defensive walls which allowed arrows or crossbow bolts to be fired on attackers. The narrow slits were intended to protect the defender by providing a very small target, but the size of the opening could also impede the defender if it was too small. A smaller horizontal opening could be added to give an archer a better view for aiming. Sometimes a sally port was included, this could allow the garrison to leave the castle and engage besieging forces. It was usual for the latrines to empty down the external walls of a castle and into the surrounding ditch. History Antecedents According to historian Charles Carlson the accumulation of wealth and resources, such as food, led to the need for defensive structures. The earliest fortifications originated in the Fertile Crescent, the Indus Valley, Egypt, and China where settlements were protected by large walls. Northern Europe was slower than the East to develop defensive structures and it was not until the Bronze Age that hill forts developed and began to spread across Europe. In the medieval period castles were influenced by earlier forms of elite architecture, contributing to regional variations. Importantly, while castles had military aspects, they contained a recognizable household structure within their walls, reflecting the multifunctional use of these buildings. Origins, 9th and 10th centuries The subject of the emergence of castles is a complex matter which has led to considerable debate. Discussions have typically attributed the rise of the castle to a reaction to attacks by Magyars, Muslims, and Vikings and a need for private defense. The breakdown of the Carolingian Empire led to the privatization of government, 
and local lords assumed responsibility for the economy and justice. However, while castles proliferated in the 9th and 10th centuries the link between periods of insecurity and building fortifications is not always straightforward. Some high concentrations of castles occur in secure places, while some border regions had relatively few castles. It is likely that the castle evolved from the practice of fortifying a lordly home. The greatest threat to a lord's home or hall was fire as it was usually a wooden structure. To protect against this, and keep other threats at bay, there were several courses of action available, create encircling earthworks to keep an enemy at a distance, build the hall in stone, or raise it up on an artificial mound, known as a mot, to present an obstacle to attackers. While the concept of ditches, ramparts, and stone walls as defensive measures is ancient, raising a mot is a medieval innovation. A bank and ditch enclosure was a simple form of defense, and when found without an associated mot is called a ringwork, when the site was in use for a prolonged period, it was sometimes replaced by a more complex structure or enhanced by the addition of a stone curtain wall. Building the hall in stone did not necessarily make it immune to fire as it still had windows and a wooden door. This led to the elevation of windows to the first floor, to make it harder to throw objects in, and to change the entrance from ground floor to first floor. These features are seen in many surviving castle keeps, which were the more sophisticated version of halls. Castles were not just defensive sites but also enhanced a lord's control over his lands. They allowed the garrison to control the surrounding area, and formed a center of administration, providing the lord with a place to hold court. Building a castle sometimes required the permission of the king or other high authority. In 864 the king of West Francia, Charles the Bald, prohibited the construction of Castello without his permission and ordered them all to be destroyed. This is perhaps the earliest reference to castles, though military historian R. Alan Brown points out that the word Castello may have applied to any fortification at the time. In some countries the monarch had little control over lords, or required the construction of new castles to aid in securing the land so was unconcerned about granting permission, as was the case in England in the aftermath of the Norman conquest and the Holy Land during the Crusades. Switzerland is an extreme case of there being no state control over who built castles, and as a result there were 4,000 in the country. There are very few castles dated with certainty from the mid-9th century. Converted into a dungeon around 950, Chateau de Douai La Fontaine in France is the oldest standing castle in Europe. 11th century. From 1000 onwards, references to castles in texts such as charters increased greatly. Historians have interpreted this as evidence of a sudden increase in the number of castles in Europe around this time, this has been supported by archaeological investigation which has dated the construction of castle sites through the examination of ceramics. The increase in Italy began in the 950s, with numbers of castles increasing by a factor of 3 to 5 every 50 years, whereas in other parts of Europe such as France and Spain the growth was slower. In 950 Provence was home to 12 castles, by 1000 this figure had risen to 30, and by 1030 it was over 100. Although the increase was slower in Spain, the 1020s saw a particular growth in the number of castles in the region, particularly in contested border areas between Christian and Muslim. Despite the common period in which castles rose to prominence in Europe, their form and design varied from region to region. In the early 11th century, the mot and keep, an artificial mound surmounted by a palisade and tower, was the most common form of castle in Europe, everywhere except Scandinavia. While Britain, France and Italy shared a tradition of timber construction that was continued in castle architecture, Spain more commonly used stone or mud brick as the main building material. The Muslim invasion of the Iberian Peninsula in the 8th century introduced a style of building developed in North Africa reliant on tapial, pebbles in cement, where timber was in short supply. Although stone construction would later become common elsewhere, from the 11th century onwards it was the primary building material for Christian castles in Spain, while at the same time timber was still the dominant building material in Northwest Europe. 
historians have interpreted the widespread presence of castles across Europe in the 11th and 12th centuries as evidence that warfare was common, and usually between local lords. Castles were introduced into England shortly before the Norman conquest in 1066. Before the 12th century castles were as uncommon in Denmark as they had been in England before the Norman conquest. The introduction of castles to Denmark was a reaction to attacks from Wendish pirates, and they were usually intended as coastal defences. The Mott and Bailey remain the dominant form of castle in England, Wales and Ireland well into the 12th century. At the same time, castle architecture in mainland Europe became more sophisticated. The dungeon was at the center of this change in castle architecture in the 12th century. Central towers proliferated, and typically had a square plan, with walls 3 to 4 m, 9.8 to 13.1 feet, thick. Their decoration emulated Romanesque architecture, and sometimes incorporated double windows similar to those found in church bell towers. Dungeons, which were the residence of the lord of the castle, evolved to become more spacious. The design emphasis of dungeons changed to reflect a shift from functional to decorative requirements, imposing a symbol of lordly power upon the landscape. This sometimes led to compromising defense for the sake of display. Innovation and scientific design, 12th century. Until the 12th century, stone-built and earth and timber castles were contemporary, but by the late 12th century the number of castles being built went into decline. This has been partly attributed to the higher cost of stone-built fortifications, and the obsolescence of timber and earthwork sites, which meant it was preferable to build in more durable stone. Although superseded by their stone successors, timber and earthwork castles were by no means useless. This is evidenced by the continual maintenance of timber castles over long periods, sometimes several centuries, ONGLYNDWR's 11th century timber castle at Sikarth was still in use by the start of the 15th century, its structure having been maintained for four centuries. At the same time there was a change in castle architecture. Until the late 12th century castles generally had few towers, a gateway with few defensive features such as arrow slits or a portcullis, a great keep or dungeon, usually square and without arrow slits, and the shape would have been dictated by the lay of the land, the result was often irregular or curvilinear structures. The design of castles was not uniform, but these were features that could be found in a typical castle in the mid-12th century. By the end of the 12th century or the early 13th century, a newly constructed castle could be expected to be polygonal in shape, with towers at the corners to provide enfilading fire for the walls. The towers would have protruded from the walls and featured arrow slits on each level to allow archers to target anyone nearing or at the curtain wall. These later castles did not always have a keep, but this may have been because the more complex design of the castle as a whole drove up costs and the keep was sacrificed to save money. The larger towers provided space for habitation to make up for the loss of the dungeon. Where keeps did exist, they were no longer square but polygonal or cylindrical. Gateways were more strongly defended, with the entrance to the castle usually between two half-round towers which were connected by a passage above the gateway, although there was great variety in the styles of gateway and entrances, and one or more portcullis. A peculiar feature of Muslim castles in the Iberian Peninsula was the use of detached towers, called Albaranid towers, around the perimeter as can be seen at the Alcazaba of Badajoz. Probably developed in the 12th century, the towers provided flanking fire. They were connected to the castle by removable wooden bridges, so if the towers were captured the rest of the castle was not accessible. When seeking to explain this change in the complexity and style of castles, antiquarians found their answer in the Crusades. It seemed that the Crusaders had learned much about fortification from their conflicts with the Saracens and exposure to Byzantine architecture. There were legends such as that of Lales, an architect from Palestine who reputedly went to Wales after the Crusades and greatly enhanced the castles in the south of the country, and it was assumed that great architects such as James of St. George originated in the east. In the mid-20th century this view was cast into doubt. Legends were discredited, 
and in the case of James of St. George it was proven that he came from St. George's Diasporanque, in France. If the innovations in fortification had derived from the East, it would have been expected for their influence to be seen from 1100 onwards, immediately after the Christians were victorious in the First Crusade, 1096-1099, rather than nearly 100 years later. Remains of Roman structures in Western Europe were still standing in many places, some of which had flanking round towers and entrances between two flanking towers. The castle builders of Western Europe were aware of and influenced by Roman design, late Roman coastal forts on the English-Saxon shore were reused and in Spain the wall around the city of Avila imitated Roman architecture when it was built in 1091. Historian Smale in Crusading Warfare argued that the case for the influence of Eastern fortification on the West has been overstated, and that Crusaders of the 12th century in fact learned very little about scientific design from Byzantine and Saracen defenses. A well-sided castle that made use of natural defenses and had strong ditches and walls had no need for a scientific design. An example of this approach is Carrick. Although there were no scientific elements to its design, it was almost impregnable, and in 1187 Saladin chose to lay siege to the castle and starve out its garrison rather than risk an assault. After the First Crusade, crusaders who did not return to their homes in Europe helped found the crusader states of the Principality of Antioch, the County of Edessa, the Kingdom of Jerusalem, and the County of Tripoli. The castles they founded to secure their equi- Please subscribe and thanks for watching.